Okay, all of my buttercream is ready. Our, the colors we'll be using are brown, green, and red. And I have some bags set up with different tips and I'll tell you what tips I'm using. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my wreath. Uh, the wreath cakes are all very rustic, so don't expect perfection. And actually the more perfect your wreath looks, the less realistic it's gonna look. So don't worry if as you're piping, you get an air bubble and your icing breaks, that's okay. You wanna have a turntable that spins and you want to make sure your cake is centered on that turntable because if it's not and you spin and we're keeping our hand in one spot to create our wreath, it's gonna be wonky, right? So you want everything centered. So I'm going to, I have a bag with brown buttercream and it's fitted with a tip number three. You can use a number four, you can use a number two. You can even use a number 13 star tip, which is a really small star to get your wreath pattern. Um, doesn't really matter what you use, whatever you like. I'm just gonna go with a number three today. So I'm gonna start squeezing. And you can see I've gotten some breaks and the icing is doing weird things, but that's okay, because I'm gonna continue and keep building on top of all of the strings over and over and over again to build this wreath, okay? Got a little bit of buttercream there. So my turntable's not spinning like super, like if I spin, it doesn't continue to spin for a long time. This one's a little slower. So if your turntable's wonky and you spin and it's doing weird things, you can just keep your cake stationary and pipe this way and turn. Totally up to you. So I'm just gonna keep going and build this wreath on my cake. You can have it as spindly or um, loose as you want, or you can have it a really full wreath. The little wiggles here, that's okay too. My icing, I was squeezing a little hard for the speed of my hand, and the icing sort of made like a little squiggle pattern. That's good too, because it looks like almost grape viney. And I'll purposely do that a little bit as well, just to add to the rustic look of our wreath. So this cake, even though we're doing it for winter, it's a winter themed cake, you can do it for spring. You can make one that's like for Easter even, you can do your wreath, you can do your gingham with pink or you can do it with yellow, lavender, whatever you want. And you can make your um, wreath, you can put little chocolate eggs, um, pale colored buttercream flowers, whatever you want. This is adaptable for any season. You can do it for fall. You can put orange and yellow leaves on the cake, little pumpkins. This is a very versatile cake. So, kind of liking how this looks. I'm just gonna go a little bit more, a little heavier. You can do this way too, that's fun. But you can see it doesn't take a lot of piping skill to get a nice wreath. Now, when we get into the roses and the pine cones, that takes a little bit more skill and a little more practice. But that's the thing with piping, right? I'm gonna put a little a few squiggles on there. That's the thing with piping, it's all practice. And once you learn, it's very easy. Okay, so my wreath is done. I'm calling it quits, I think that's good enough. I'm gonna set this bag aside and set my cake aside as well. Let's put it back here. And now we're going to work on our flowers. So I have a cake board here. Whoop. I have some little parchment squares of paper that I've cut. 
You can use wax paper, butcher paper, whatever you have on hand. So I've got some squares and I've got some rectangles as well. The rectangles I'm going to be piping little branches of evergreen and the pine cones and the roses are going on the squares. So I have the board and I'm not, um, because once my flowers and all of my uh, piped pieces are done, I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator because my buttercream is made with butter. They're really gonna get nice and firm and I'll be able to pick them up with scissors or even my hands. Um, I didn't bring gloves today, so I'll probably use the scissors so I can position them where I want on my cake and they're a lot easier to work with cold than soft. I'm working with my Swiss-ish meringue buttercream. Um, it is more difficult to pipe with because it's a softer icing. If you struggle with piping with Swiss meringue, Italian meringue, or Swiss-ish meringue, you can definitely pipe your flowers with American buttercream and still ice your cake and fill it with the, um, the less sweet options like Swiss meringue. So if you have trouble with the Swissish or the Swiss meringue, you can definitely just pipe your accents with the American buttercream. Okay, I have here a rose nail and my colors were all mixed. They're all kind of custom colors. I didn't use just what was in the bottle. And as I use the colors, I'll tell you what I put in them to make that color. But you can also reference under recipes, our artisan accents, um, color guide, which will tell you how to mix. I think there's 50 colors and variations of those 50 in the, in the guide. A very useful tool. So I have a rose nail. Basically, it's a nail with a metal top that we can turn while we're piping. What do I want to start with? Let's start with something easy. The easiest thing, believe it or not, is probably the evergreen. The evergreen I'm not going to do on the nail. I'm just going to do it on the flat surface. And I have a piping bag here with a number two tip on it. So I'm going to first make a spine or a center for the evergreen. And I'll do this two or three times so that you can really see what I'm doing. And I'm going to pipe one line on my parchment. And that's very thin because I'm putting these in the fridge and I want to be able to pick them up and move them. I want there to be more substance for these to be um, chunkier and not uh, warm up so quickly. So I'm going to actually build up this center and pipe another line next to this one. And you want it thicker on the bottom and tapering, kind of like a branch would do. Just so this has a little bit more body. I also, when you're piping, it's good to have a paper towel or a, a rag to always clean off your tip. You want a good clean tip on your piping bag. So once I have that center, I'm gonna work sort of in a V, shooting off that center vein. So I'm going to pipe with, and touch the edge of my vein and come out and pull, I'm squeezing, I pull and I release. Now, I don't know if you can see, I'm not going flat onto the paper because when I peel these off the paper when they're cold, I don't want those to stay on the paper and not come off with, with my branch. So I'm kind of coming off the paper. So I'm squeezing, I pull, release. These don't have to be perfect. Again, it's nature, right? Some little twiggy things will be longer than others. It's okay. But I do start a bit longer at the base and I pipe a little shorter, meaning I stop squeezing a little sooner with each pull. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And you can see my V pattern. I squeeze. And once you get the hang of it, you can go very quickly. Now I'm gonna just fill in this center space. And as I fill in, instead of my hand pulling this way, I'll come up a little bit so that I have like a rounded branch. Does that make sense, Jonathan, what I just said? Perfect. Good. 
I always wonder. <laughs> I'm like, am I explaining this well? Sounds a little crazy. But the nice thing is, is I'm here for you guys. I'm available. If I say something, you're like, what? You can message me. I will answer <laughs> in a way that makes more sense for you. So there's all different ways to explain things and not everybody learns in the same way. So, okay, so there's one branch. I think that's really pretty. I'm gonna do one more. And you'll see I piped on a curve. You can pipe them straight. Um, it's nice to have a mix of straight and curved just for variety. I'm all about variety changing up the sizes and the shapes of things and the shades. So again, I'm piping up and off the board or the, the center vein. So I don't want it sitting on the paper. I don't want that to stick to the paper. Come on this side. Buttercream cakes are so popular. Um, I still often, when I do buttercream cakes, some of my accents are still in fondant, like this cake. It's a buttercream cake, but my um, gingham is in black and gray fondant. And I find some people really don't like the taste of fondant, but those people are usually okay with having some accents on the cake with fondant. As long as the whole cake's not fondant and all the decorations are fondant, um, I'm okay with that personally, but some people are like anti-fondant. But it's a fantastic medium. I love working with it, but I also love working with buttercream. Okay, so let's just do one more. I have one straight, one curved this way. I'm gonna curve one in the other direction, just for fun. I don't know how I'm gonna position them on the cake yet, but it's good to have some variety. Cleaning my tip off, that's very important. So again, I'm piping sort of in a V shape going towards the tip of my branch. It's good to have photo reference if you're not sure how something grows or how it looks. It's not cheating. Even artists use photo reference. I say even artists. Technically, I guess I could be considered an artist I too, right? To <laughs> I don't feel like one. Like I don't feel like I've earned that right to call oh. myself an artist but I guess I am a food, a food artist. You're crazy. So I'm just filling in the center here. There we go. Maybe a couple right here. I love the evergreen. I love those. Okay. That's good enough for that. Again, feel free to ask questions. I'm around. You can send uh, direct messages on Instagram. You can uh, go to the website and comment or ask questions. You can go to learn to cake. No, it's learn to cake at gmail.com. That's my email if you want to message me directly, Facebook Messenger, whatever. I'll get it. I'll get it and I'll answer. Let's move on to roses. I'm trying to think if. Roses are harder or pine cones? I think roses are harder. So let's do pine cones first. So I'm going with more brown icing. I put a little bit of white in the bag just so that when I pipe, there's a streak of white here and there, just so that they pop, they pop a little bit against the brown of the wreath. So I have my rose nail, and I'm gonna put a little bit of buttercream on the rose nail so that my paper sticks. Okay, it's not gonna come off and not gonna slide around. My bag is fitted with a number 59 tip. 59 tip sort of looks like a rose tip. Rose tips generally are straight with a, uh, and they're on an angle. This is on a, not quite a 45 degree angle. And the top of the tip is more open and the bottom of the tip here is more pinched. So just like a rose, you wanna have that wide 
longer tip or end down. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do for my pine cone, I'm going to hold my bag at 90 degrees and just kind of pipe sort of a blob in circles. This doesn't have to be pretty. This is just there to create a base and some structure to our pine cone. So now I'm holding my bag at three o'clock, which for you guys, it's probably opposite. Would it be nine o'clock? Anyway, nine o'clock, my bag is pointing to the right, the end of my bag. And my tip is sort of flat. So um, that curve in the tip, this one has a curve, the rose tip is straight. This curve is like, you want it like a smiley face. You don't want it frowning. You want it like a smiley face with that open, the open side that is a little longer towards you. And what you're going to do is you're going to start to squeeze and, and make like a wavy motion while you squeeze. So my hand is going like this and it's a continuous squeeze. And as I'm doing that, I'm turning my rose nail. This takes a little bit of practice because if you squeeze really hard and you're not turning your rose nail very fast, you're gonna get this huge buildup of icing. Or you might be squeezing very gently and not turning your ro rose nail or turning your rose nail too fast and then your icing breaks. It's a learning process. Don't get frustrated. It is a rustic cake. So if they're not absolutely perfect, it's okay, but practice. So again, I'm turning my rose nail and I'm making a, a waving motion with my hand. Once I do that, it sort of looks like a flower. I'm going to build my base a little bit more, just like I did at the bottom, cleaning off my tip. And I'm coming in because a pine cone is fat on the bottom and it tapers as you go up. So I'm coming in a little bit closer and that base that I just squeezed isn't quite as wide. It's a little more narrow. So there we have that, okay? So I piped another little base and I'm gonna come in a little tighter again, squeezing, wavy motion, turning. Pipe another little base and we're getting close to finished. And then at the top, I'm just gonna randomly pipe a few blobs that are a little bit more upright, okay? So that's our buttercream pine cone, cleaning off my tip. I'm gonna carefully slide this off my rose nail, put it down onto my board, and that will set up really nicely and firm and hard for me to transfer it to my cake. I'm gonna do one more of these. So again, I'm going to pipe my base and it, it can be nice and um, full, doesn't have to be pretty again. And we're going to again, turn the nail as we do that very slight wave motion. Like so, clean your tip. Another base. Pipe. Pipe another little base. So you just have to remember as you build your pine cone, the base is getting smaller and smaller. Okay, so that when we pipe this part, that gets smaller. So another little base. This one's almost done. And then we just pipe a couple more upright sort of blobs, okay? So that is the pine cone. So I'm going to slide it gently and move it to the board. That's the pine cone. So we're going to move on in just a sec. I'm going to clean some of my tips and we'll move on to the rose. <laughs> 